Hotels host people from every walk of life. Fleeting visitors often anonymous. Truly anything can happen in these places. What is more, the events which transpire behind such walls rarely ever gets revealed. Until now. The paranormal scholar once again welcomes horror narrator Mortis Media to help narrate these allegedly true tales of the paranormal. I'm definitely a people person, so it didn't take me long to work my way up the ladder at our hotel. I love that hotel. It was old, built in 1967. Despite the shambles it was in when I worked there, it used to be the most happening place in town. The decor was unlike a lot of hotels you see today. Elaborate chandeliers and imported Spanish tiles, as well as beautiful, handmade stained glass skylights. A lot of people were shocked our rooms were only $50 a night. It wasn't long before I realised why. Something was just off about that place. We had this service hallway that connected the kitchen and the storage rooms to all of the conference rooms. It was my first day and I was taking a tour of the facility with my manager. I remember noticing how it smelled like a nursing home like mothballs and death. And it was just unnaturally cold, especially for Louisiana in the spring. The deeper we went down the hallway, the colder it got. I actually started to feel sick at one point. At the time, I just put it off as nerves. However, a couple of weeks later, I realised it wasn't me. It was whatever was in that hallway. I was working the 3 to 11 shift. Around 8 or 9pm, I went to find a guest some silverware in the kitchen. I was still pretty new there, so after searching for the light switch, I gave up and used my phone as a flashlight to grab the silverware. That was when I noticed the sound of footsteps. Really fast footsteps. I started to turn around when someone, something, ran right past me into the dark, knocking over the stack of dishes on the prep table. Needless to say, I forgot all about the silverware and ran the hell out of there. I ended up calling a housekeeper who stayed in the hotel occasionally to grab it from the kitchen. She told me no one was in there. No one who worked at the hotel wanted to go in that hallway. Even the cook would bring her granddaughter with her in the morning to keep her company while she got breakfast started. No one ever knew what exactly was back there. No one asked, either. I guess we just didn't want to find out. After that experience, I was sufficiently scared, but curious also. I had become friends with our elderly breakfast cook. She was a little old woman, probably in her seventies, called Mrs. J for the sake of this recollection. She mentioned that she had been working there since the early seventies. After she told me stories of that place, I never looked at that hotel the same again. She told me that, as the owner was cheap, he never purchased security cameras for the entire property. He installed two actual cameras in the lobby, one at each entrance, and one by the pool, but placed mock cameras down the halls by the rooms. They gave the appearance of security, when actually they were just plastic boxes. Anyway, one night a young lady checked in stinking drunk, by herself at one in the morning. She requested a smoking room, which are only located on the back side of the property on the second floor. This area is also one of the many blind spots for the hotel's limited cameras. After she went to her room, no one heard from her for the rest of the night. That was until the housekeeper showed up in the morning to find the woman in the parking lot, covered in blood and whiskey, dead. Apparently, after she checked in, she had continued her binge on the balcony facing the parking lot. She must have fallen off and bled to death. The horrifying part is that she must have still been alive after the fall, because the trail of blood behind her 
which made it look like she had tried to crawl for help. Because there were no cameras, the front desk was blissfully unaware. We always had problems in that wing of the hotel afterwards. Domestic violence cases always came out of that wing. People's tempers just seemed to skyrocket when they stayed in that area of the hotel. Another interesting story she told me was of a country singer named Charlie Rich, who died in one of our suites. The suites were located inside the lobby facing the front desk. He had a pulmonary embolism whilst his wife was eating breakfast in our restaurant. Mrs. J was even there when his wife found him dead. Room 208. Ever since, a lot of customers complained of people knocking on their door at odd hours. But the front desk never saw anyone go up to the room. One customer came running out in the middle of the night. He said that there was a man in his room. Upon investigation, there was no sign of an intruder. A lot of times when the room would stay vacant for a while, the TV would turn on by itself. I even saw it through an open window. It just turned on, and it was always the same channel, CMT, channel 71. Charlie never really bothered the staff. I'd even find myself talking to him on one of our more quiet nights. Sometimes I even played my old country playlist for him. I ended up quitting after working there for five years. The owner was doing some sketchy things with my paycheck, so I said my final farewell to the hotel I had grown to love so much. Not even a year after I left, the owner suddenly shut the place down. I am not sure why, but all of the employees were told not to come back the next day, or ever. They left everything in there too. All of the papers, computers, furniture, food all left inside the massive, vacant, blood-red building. Ever since my first day at this luxury hotel, I'd heard stories of how people killed themselves, overdosed, slit their wrists. One guy even took a shotgun to the face. But none of that fazed me since there were no ghost stories. Until one night, I came into work around 10.30pm. The girl I relieved from was out in the lobby, which was not unusual. I asked her, what you needed some lobby air? And she just looked at me in horror. Well, once I got situated and ready to work, she explained to me that she kept hearing a little girl say mummy right behind her. I didn't take her too seriously though, as we all love to joke around and scare each other. Move forward a couple of hours. I was done with my work for the night, and I decided to lean back in my chair and close my eyes a little bit. I usually have music playing in the background, but today, I didn't for some odd reason. The moment I closed my eyes, I heard it. I tried to make sense of it, but nothing in the office would make such a noise. I then put some music on and cranked up the volume. Now it's nearing the end of my shift, and my security guard comes into my office to finish up his paperwork in peace. Here we are, me sitting behind my table, and he's sitting at our co-worker's table. We have complete silence when all of the sudden we both hear. We look at each other to verify that we had both heard what we just heard. He looks around and tries to find out where the noise could have come from. It must have been my chair, he said. But you didn't move, I said. Well, it has to be the valet garage door opening, he said. The door has been open all day, I reply. And then again. But this time, we just nope out of there. Later that night, I returned to work and this time, I promised I would play music to muffle the noise. I did just that. But at one point in the night, 
Me and the bellman had to go to the fourth floor storage area to grab a couple of items. We grab the items and leave the room. A couch which was standing upright and was just across the room falls over. We shut the lights and nope out of there. None of this stuff was scaring me as bad as the next scene. We are waiting for the service elevator to come down to the fourth floor. And as they open, what we saw will always haunt me. A little pink hairband in the corner of the elevator. Now it's getting out of hand. I took a couple of days off to keep my mind off it after this. A few months later, there was another incident at the gym. At this hotel, our gym is open 24 hours a day, but our pool closes at 11pm. If you stay in the hotel, you will notice that the gym and pool are right next to each other and have windows from the gym facing the pool. Well, this hotel was just like that, except it's located on the fourth floor and also has a balcony. This is where shit really hit the fan. I get a call from the gym. It's a lady, and she has a sort of panic in her voice. I ask her if everything is alright, and if I should call the emergency personnel. She declines and informs me that there's a little girl in the pool area but she's on the balcony and can't get her card to open the door. As soon as she said little girl, my world just froze in terror. She said that this little girl was watching her from the pool balcony through the windows, but she was not accompanied by any adult. This is when she tried to get the door open but couldn't. The only person in our hotel that can open that door was our engineer. I send our engineer up there, he opens the door, and there's no girl to be found. The lady in the gym was terrified, and I was scared shitless. And let's just say, I haven't been to that hotel since. I worked at a Hilton property in Wisconsin for a few years during college. It was my last day of working, and I was on the 3 to 11 shift. Generally, I had enjoyed my time working there. It was a Sunday, which meant it was absolutely dead, only six people staying in an 85-room hotel. Being a sentimentalist, towards the end of my shift, I gave one last walk around the hotel a final look at the place before I left. As I made my way to the top floor, I remembered that there was a ladder in a supply closet that led to the roof of the hotel. I had never gone up there before, I had never felt comfortable leaving the desk unattended for long periods, and I could never contrive a reason to go, other than, neat, I'm on a roof. But hey, it was my last shift. No one had approached the desk in a few hours, so a cigarette on the roof sounded pretty romantic. I need to point out that the only way to access the roof was through this ladder, which, being in the supply closet, needed a master keycard to access. So, using the keycard, I entered this supply closet, made my way to the ladder, and unlocked the door. It took some elbow grease, but I eventually felt the rush of spring air as the door opened. It felt great. I stuck my head up to get a look of the view that I would be enjoying. It was then that I saw the figure. It was night and wasn't very well lit, but I could tell that they were tall and impossibly thin. Not only that, they were seemingly transparent. They were squatting, staring down at something. Once I recognised that, wait, that's a person, their head snapped around to look in my direction. I will stress this again, there was no way that anyone could have been up there. There's an alarm that notifies us when the trap door is open, and without being a member of staff, there was no way anyone could have been there. Upon realising what I was looking at, 
I gasped and almost fell off the ladder. I couldn't have closed the door and latched it fast enough. I raced back to the desk and stood there like a terrified bunny for the remaining 20 minutes of my shift, paranoid at the thought of whoever or whatever might be making its way down to say hi. I used to work in a hotel in Southern California, doing security. Every night we would get a printout of which rooms were vacant. It was my job to go through all the rooms and ensure that all the lights were off and that the windows were secure. I went into a room and found the light on. I started turning the lights off from the left side of the room to right around the windows and up to the bathroom. The bathroom has French style doors that open towards the room. The doors themselves only have hinges and two handles to pull on them. No other devices attached. The doors are also made of a very light wood. Anyway, I opened the left door out all the way so that I could reach around it and turn the light off in the bathroom after turning the light off, I realised it was freezing in the room, which is not uncommon being housekeeping liked it cold when they worked on a room. I reached up for the thermostat, and when my hand was within four inches of the door, the bathroom door which I had just opened slammed shut by itself. Terrified, I ran out of the room immediately. Whilst I was pulling the door shut behind me, the deadbolt pushed itself out the door and slammed into the door frame. I was petrified when I had to reach inside the door to disengage it. I stood there for a minute or two with my eyes watering, wondering what had just happened. I decided to go back in and look to just be sure of what happened. I went in and looked at the door. It was shut. I moved it around to see if it would close on its own, which it wouldn't. I tried throwing the door to slam it, and the door is so lightweight, it caught a lot of air and wouldn't even shut all the way after throwing it closed. As far as I could see, there wasn't an explanation for what happened, and I stopped going into that room. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Real Paranormal Stories. I would like to extend yet another big thank you to Mortis Media for his narrations. Please be sure to visit his channel and watch the second half of our Haunted Hotel collaboration. Simply follow the link on screen. Also, if you haven't done so already, why not watch Mort and I's first collaboration? Remember, the more you know, the more there is to fear.